Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and yeah, I want to continue with my plane inside a plane challenge. I'm not the first person to attempt this, but uh, yes, let's see if we can make this happen. So previously, I did this on Tuesday night, and as you know, on Tuesday night, I kind of, it's a chill thing where I play around with uh, you t on Twitch. People suggest challenges, I do them, sometimes things explode. Usually the challenges get accomplished, but yeah, flying a plane and landing in a plane inside a plane, that was not to be. I got pretty close, but I decided to come back to the whole thing. So I pretty much used exactly the same aircraft. The only thing I added was a pair of air brakes, which as you can see are pretty massive, but they uh, let me quickly uh, adjust my speed because the engine, right, the little uh, Weasley engine, has huge amounts of uh, spool up and spool down time, so it's getting the thing to match speed was a horrifically hard, hard thing to do. But eventually got them roughly at the same speed here, and, and then it's a case of just now putting them back inside each other. So once again in close, throttle is down, and the, the airspeed of the other aircraft is about 130 or thereabouts. So, here we go. Aircraft seem to be climbing at about 10 meters per second. We should probably fix that at some point. Or we're gonna run out of altitude. Okay, just trying to use roll to adjust my lateral positioning. Uh, get it on the doorstep there. Oh, I can see the shadow! Yes, okay! Okay, so now we've touched down. Um not quite in there as well as I'd like, thank you. You know what, I'm gonna throttle the engine up and see if I can push it inside. This might just be a little... <laughs> I did this and the plane is too big to fit. Oh great. So, I've got it in, but because of the magic of collisions and colliders in Kerbal Space Program, the air brake is stuck outside. So, I think that's about as good as I'm gonna do here, so let's close up the patient and take this thing home. <laughs> <laughs> like that. Now, that's interesting. I hadn't realized that worked. That must be an improvement that's happened in a recent version. So, the the air intake stopped working, or the, the jet engine stopped working inside the cargo bay, even although they are not part of the same vessel. Previously, they had to be the same vessel for that kind of thing to happen. So, while we have a really long way home, we, uh, let's, let's talk about planes being inside other planes. Obviously, uh, landing planes, aircraft inside other aircraft, I don't believe has actually been done, but certainly there are aircraft which transport pieces of other aircraft, such as the Guppy and the Super Guppy. Uh, apparently, the, if you look at these aircraft, they're crazy big, they, they kind of look like giant whales or something. But I've heard that they don't have hydraulic assistance for their control surfaces, so the pilots you know, are working to fly this really big thing with brute force. But uh, you know, launching aircraft from other aircraft and docking them back, that is, that is a legit idea that's been explored a few times. In fact, they started it back in World War I where they attached a little biplane to the back of a flying boat. And you know, they continued attaching uh, aircraft to zeppelins, airships, and in the 1950s, in the, during the Cold War, they attempted to attach uh, aircraft to bombers. The idea was the bombers would carry them as a support aircraft. Okay, we're lined up for landing now, so I think we're getting close enough that I want to deploy the gear just to help slow me down. Look at how low that... Oh, wait. Cannot deploy while... Uh-oh. Yay! Yay for flight testing! Are my landing gear is out, and it will not deploy. That is fantastic! All that delicate operations only to have them both crash on landing. That is... That is truly justice, right? <laughs> I'm not getting... I'm, what am I gonna do here? Uh, well... I mean, I guess I'm gonna try and land really slowly and see if I can hang on to those rear wheels before the front wheels touch. This thing should be really well balanced for that, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm basically going to do the longest wheelie. That's what's going to happen. Okay, so let's get it lined up. I'm going to do this next to the runway because I don't think the run... I think the runway just has too many dangers. So I'm slowing down to like 94, but that will break basically anything. 
And the other thing about this aircraft is I scaled it up, but I didn't scale up the air brakes, so the air brakes are just really, really weak. So I'm not sure if I'm going to bleed off this speed. Let's just make sure. I, just let's let's get it lined up, and then we'll deal with the slowing down when I reach the surface. You know, actually, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I have thrust reversers bound to action group six. This is going to be a doddle. This is going to be a doddle. So we're just going to carefully touch down. And actually, I think my descent path is really a little uh, shallow right now. Or rather, it's too steep and I'm having to pull out of my descent to just touch down over the runway. Or next to the runway. So, uh, 70 meters is the ground. If I get below that, I will crash into it. So let's make sure we arrest our altitude before we reach that particular momentous moment. Okay, 73, just holding that attitude, 63 meters per second, oh look at this, beautiful, ready to throttle up and into reverse, look at this, 40 meters per second, 30, 30, oh, ah, something exploding there, 20, and I think that is a successful landing, but the question is, did the pilot off the path, oh my god, he's, oh wait, yeah, there he is, <laughs> I thought for a moment he died. Oh, let's look at that. What a brave pair of Kerbals they are. I'm Scott Manley. Don't do as I do. Fly safe.